In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Once again, the Lord gathers us together at this banquet. We begin by asking for God's forgiveness and mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us of our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to an everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may your grace at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works, as we ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines. Juicy rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. 
the Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, 
I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priest and elders of the people in parables saying the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son he dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast but they refused to come. A second time he sent out other servants saying, tell those invited, behold, I have prepared my banquet, my calves and fattened cattle are killed and everything is ready, come to my feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. And then he said to his servants, the feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out therefore into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. And the king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, and cast them into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Liturgy of the Word today presents to us two preachers. Isaiah and Jesus. In the first reading, Isaiah is preaching to the people a message of hope. A people who had suffered greatly. And he talks about a future banquet. A banquet that will be provided by the Lord. 
a banquet of wondrous food. And the people, as they are listening to Isaiah, are satisfied. That's great. And then he says, and it will take place on God's holy mountain. And the people said, that's exactly where I thought it would be. This is great. And then Isaiah says, and God says, I will call people from every race and nation. People from all corners of the globe will come streaming to my house and my holy mountain. And those who heard Isaiah must have turned to one another and said, that's not how I thought it would happen. Who are those people? Why are they there? This can't be right. And Isaiah says, no, that's the way God designed it. Not just us, but people of every race and nation. That didn't sit well with those who heard Isaiah. And by the time Jesus begins to preach, it still wasn't sitting well with generations later. I sometimes wonder what it must have been like to be there when Jesus preached to the people. I, I sometimes think, we think it's like a, a Sunday Mass where he's there preaching and everybody is quiet and they're attentive, they're listening to him, they're, they're, they're attached to every word he says. I think the truth is much different. That the crowd, the people who listened to Jesus, were skeptical, they were critical, and I think there was a lot of audience participation. Often enough, they shouted back. They asked a question. They shared their opinions about what Jesus just said. So Jesus is back with the banquet image. And he's talking about a banquet. And eventually, after a lot of things happen, people are called to the banquet from the streets, the alleys, the hedgerows. There are people of all types, of all different kinds of people, and they're all there at the banquet. And the descendants of Isaiah's people are more forthright with Jesus and say, wait a minute, how can that be? You mean to tell me that at the banquet in your father's kingdom, all these people are going to be there? The good, the bad, people who were careful about life and those who weren't, the poor, the ugly, they're all there. And some people must have said, Jesus, we know you're the teacher, we know you're the master, but this doesn't, this doesn't look right. And it says to a lot of us who are standing around that it doesn't matter what you do. It, doesn't, it just doesn't matter because everybody gets in, all kinds of people. And that's when Jesus talks about that second image. And when the king comes in, last judgment king comes in, and he sees somebody without a garment, the required wedding garment, the man is thrown out. His audience, the audience listening to Jesus, thought that was right. Okay then. So it does matter what you do to get to the banquet. And I think that is the point. Everybody is invited. People are called from all places, all times and walks of life. They're all there. But there is a cost. Something has to happen. 
It doesn't matter really what you wear. It matters what's inside. Have you made the commitment to the king? Have you shown respect for the king? Have you obeyed the king? If you have, no matter what, you get to stay. But the garment represents one person's refusal to do that. He could have easily gotten a garment. If you couldn't provide one, they were provided for you. They're hanging right in the cupboard. You could have picked it up, but you just didn't care. The man just didn't bother to show the normal respect that the king deserved. And without that, you don't get to stay. And I think the liturgy of the word today is helping us to appreciate that we don't decide who gets to the banquet at the end of time. But what we must decide is whether we will and whether we take that baptismal garment that was given to us and live it and wear it and never take it off. And then we stand with all the others and are admitted to the banquet for eternal life. Those parables are meant for us. They're meant to ask us to think about that end time banquet and not to think about who else is there, but to think about whether we are there and we get to stay there for eternity. Together, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith and with confidence, we come before the Lord with our needs. For our church, may God continue to help us grow in holiness and strengthen us as we nurture a culture of healing and life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president and all those with COVID-19, may they be restored to good health and may doctors find effective treatments and vaccines to control the spread of the virus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, that through lives of prayer, we may grow in faith and help each other follow Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, 
may they come to share in the adherence of the kingdom and the fullness of joy in God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the living and deceased members of Holy Sepulchre and St. Killian parishes, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks for the gift of faith. Help us to keep our baptismal garment clean throughout our lives so that we may be worthy of the banquet of eternity as we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, who is the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, accept the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotion, we may pass to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the saints and angels, we proclaim your glory as without end we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the, the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. 
O Lord, we entreat your majesty most humbly that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.